the Marantz SR8015 or the Denon AVR X8500 flagship receivers. Which one should you get? That's the question I'm going to be answering in today's video. Hey folks, I'm Gene DeLaSalo with Audioholics. I hope you guys had a Merry Christmas. I hope we have a great new year going forward. I'm still spreading some Christmas cheer. It's 30 degrees in Florida. I'm going to be wearing some nice long sleeve shirts to go to bed. I love it when it gets cold here. It gets me to wear these kind of shirts. So we've been getting this question a lot, especially since we gave the, the Marantz SR8015 product of the year recently, as you saw in the article and the video we posted on Christmas Day. And the Denon 8500 won our product of the year award several years back. It's a couple of year old model receiver. So you guys probably are aware, or at least most of you are, that Sound United owns both Denon and Marantz. And as a result, they share engineering resources. They are on very similar platforms. So much of the technology in each of the receivers is very much the same. In fact, these receivers are more similar than they are different. But there are differences between the two models. The SR8015, for one, came out recently. It's a much newer model. It does support 8K through one of the HDMI inputs, whereas the, uh, the 8500, the Den and the 8500H, currently doesn't support 8K, but they are coming up with a hardware upgrade. I'm guessing when the hardware upgrade comes for the 8500H, it'll be on all of the ports. So at some point, It'll be an it'll be at an advantage for 8K or for next generation um, HDMI 2.1 for gamers out there. So before I answer this question, I wanted to kind of go over the the differences between the two models so you guys could better understand what is going on with these two receivers. So I put together this little table here. On the left here, we have the Denon AVR X 8500H. The retail on it is four thousand dollars. Thirteen channels of processing two independent subwoofer outputs, whereas the Marantz SR8015 is about $3,200. Again, 13 channels of processing and two subwoofer outputs independent. So in reality, both of these receivers are, are really, when you think about it, they're 15 channels of processing. So you've got 13 channels of speakers and you got two independent subwoofer outputs. And what does that mean when I say independent subwoofer outputs? What that means is that you have independent channel delay and independent channel trim for each of those subwoofers, you can configure them as mono, which is what I would do for most cases, or you could configure them as stereo left, right, and still have the LFE go to both subwoofers and all the bass managed speakers sum the bass to both subwoofers. That's good when you have your subwoofers up close to the towers and you wanna raise the crossover frequency a little bit higher and get more output from your subs to help blend in with the main speakers. But I don't want to diverge too much into that topic. We could do a separate video on that. But the good news is both receivers have two independent subwoofer outputs. It makes it a world easier to do multi-sub integration so you could time align your subwoofers and get the best results, the best calibration from both subs blended in with your speakers. So I like the fact that both of these receivers have that. Now the Denon has 13 internal amplified channels. That means you could plug 13 speakers up to the den and, and it'll power all 13 speakers. Whereas the Marantz only has 11 channels built into it. So you can only power 11 speakers. If you want to get to 13 speakers, you have to add a two channel external amplifier. So that's a major difference right there. The power ratings are kind of similar. The den is a little bit more powerful. It gets an extra 10 watts a channel. It's 150 watts times 13, whereas the Marantz is 140 watts times 11. Now, both of these guys do really good power numbers with multiple channels driven. In fact, when I measured the Marantz SR8015, I got over 100 watts a channel with seven channels driven. So you know the Denon's going to do at least 10 more watts a channel on that aspect, possibly a little bit more because it has a really big, I think it has an 18 pound transformer. So it's got a really large power supply because it's, it's providing more power for two more channels. Typically when you have a one giant power supply powering a multi-channel amplifier, when you only drive one or two channels, you just have so much more overhead to really drive more power to those speakers. So there is an advantage the Denon on paper and on the bench is definitely a little bit more powerful than, than the Marantz. But these are both very capable amplifiers that could drive 
a wide assortment of speakers. They're both safe at driving four ohm loads. I've run these at four ohm loads and I have the Marantz SR8015. Never had a problem powering nine speakers in my family room with this. This thing is a beast. So the difference in power supply, the Denon has a linear E-core. That's like a square transformer you can see right here. And the Marantz has a toroidal transformer. As you can see right here, it's a round circular transformer. So there's pros and cons to each. I'm not going to sit here and debate and tell you that the toroid is always better than an e-core because you could have a good e-core design and you could have a bad toroidal design. It really depends on the engineering of it. Some of the advantages of a toroidal is that they maintain their flux density within the transformer itself so it doesn't leak out and radiate as much but they do radiate when they're saturated. So when you overdrive a toroid, it's just as bad pretty much as an e-core in terms of radiated emissions. So they both have their pros and cons. I really think the only reason why Denon went with an e-core over a toroid was just, just trying to fit everything into a chassis. I think the footprint fit better in the way they laid out that receiver as opposed to the Marantz. The Marantz had two less channels. It had a little bit less stuff inside that box. The box is smaller. So they fit a toroid in there to be more efficient because toroids tend to be a little bit more efficient with all things being equal. So both receivers have a preamp disconnect mode. And what does that mean? Preamp disconnect mode. We found this several years ago when I was reviewing the SR8015. And I want to kind of talk to you guys for a second about that. When I was reviewing the SR8015, I found that if I was driving the preamp beyond about a volt and a half, that it started getting not distorted but i started seeing a noisy fft and it just didn't look pretty the distortion figures weren't great even though it wasn't clipping well i finally figured out and this is a problem with most receivers when you're using the preamp output and you're driving it up to about a, a volt and a half even though those amplifiers aren't being used they will clip because they're open circuited they are driving a lot of voltage and if you overdrive them you will clip those amps and that noise will go back into the preamp and it'll cause the problems that i saw so back here we go um the 8500 already had a preamp disconnect mode which is really cool because this receiver came out like two years ago but the sr8012 did not have a preamp disconnect mode but now the 8015 does and when i measured the preamp outputs of the 8015 they were some of the best preamp outputs I've ever seen in a receiver. In fact, they rival most processors. We directly compared the Marantz AV7705 and 7706 to the SR8015. The SR8015 measures significantly better. Even though the 8015 has unbalanced outputs, the measurements, the noise floor, the distortion is better on the SR8015 than they are out of the balanced outputs of the AV7705 and the 7706. So at the very minimum, the Marantz is at, at least as good as the Denon. And in fact, I think it might be better in terms of preamp outputs because even with the preamp disconnect, the disconnect turned off, allowing a full pass through between the preamp and the power amps, the 8015 measured spectacularly, even when I was driving the amplifiers into clipping. So they put some serious buffer circuits into that preamp. They really paid attention to my review of the 8012. And as a result, they quite possibly put the best preamp section in a receiver that they've done in years on the 8015. So I'm going to say that in this aspect, the Marantz SR8015 is at least on par, possibly better than the 8500 in terms of the preamp outputs. They both have seven channel, 7.1 channel analog inputs in case you want to plug in an old uh, SACD player and you don't want to use a digital connection. You can do that here. Uh, they both, like I said, have dual independent subwoofer outputs. They have the same, same amount of HDMI ins and the same amount of HDMI outs. Only one of them right now supports 8K and it's only through one port and that's in the Marantz, whereas the Denon is waiting for a future hardware upgrade. Dimensionally, they're the same width, which is a standard width. The, the Denon is a little bit deeper and a little bit taller. It's about an, almost an inch taller. So it is a bigger product. It is a bigger chassis. It weighs like an extra, I don't know, about 12 pounds. So as I said, it has a bigger power supply. They both have a three-year warranty. And I just wanted to show you pictures aesthetically how they look. This is the Marantz with the little porthole here. 
this door flaps down and it's more of a display. And then this is the Denon. So I say I give the aesthetic edge to the Marantz. I kind of like that porthole. I know some people think it's controversial, but I love that halo, that blue halo ring. I just think it looks great. And then um, if we look at the internals, here's the Denon. Here's the Marantz. They both have monolithic amplifier construction. That means each, am each amplifier is on its own board. So you see the Denon has 13 and the Marantz has 11. Very similar amp design, but the Marantz tends to focus. The Sound United focuses the Marantz brand on, on better preamp circuitry, better components in the audio chain. So technically, at least their story is that the Marantz is a more musical piece than the Denon. But to be honest with you, these are both state of the art. These are really good sounding products. They, they put some of the best components in the industry into both of these receivers. So the question still remains, which one should you get? I'm going to tell you right up front, if you never plan on using more than 11 speakers, save yourself the money and go right to the Marantz. I mean, it just makes no sense to get two extra channels of processing that you're never going to use, and you're going to spend $800 more. Get the Marantz. If you never plan on putting an external amplifier into either of these and you do want to have the 13 channels of amplification spend the 800 dollars more get the denon you know there's a future upgrade path for that for hdmi 2.1 they're going to support the product spend the extra money get the denon you won't regret it but here's the real kicker and i was thinking the marantz is 800 dollars less right so if you got the marantz and you went out and you got yourself a really kick-ass two-channel amplifier, let's say the two-channel Emotiva, which is about a 1000 bucks. So you spend an extra $200. Now you could go from 140 watts a channel for your main speakers to about 300 watts a channel. Or you could find a deal on another amplifier, an Outlaw Audio or Parasound, whatever. Whatever you find a deal on, that $800 could be used towards a really good two-channel amplifier. You already know the Marantz has an incredible preamp output. You saw it in my measurements. You saw my review. So if you really have some hulking tower speakers that need a lot of power and you do a lot of two-channel listening, then it's a no-brainer. Get the Marantz SR8015. Save that $800. Get a little bit more money saved up. Get a really good two-channel amp. Power your main speakers with that two-channel amp. Use the preamp outputs of the SR8015. Don't worry about it that it's unbalanced. The unbalanced outputs are awesome. Most of the budget-level processors on the market that have balanced is really pseudo-balanced. They use a phase splitter. It's not a full differential circuit path. And as a result, the measurements are no better on most of the XLR outputs of these of these budget-wise AV processors. And I say budget-wise because up to about four or $5,000, they're fake balanced. So it's not a huge advantage to use the XLR outputs on a lot of these processors. And the, the Marantz SR8015 preamp outputs, the unbalanced outputs are excellent. So that's it. I just wanted to tell you guys uh, what my thoughts on it when you compare the SR8015 to the Denon 8500H. Be proud of if you have either of these models, be proud that you have them. I'm not telling you to change them. Don't go and sell them and buy something else. These are great products. This is a great time to be an audiophile and a home theater enthusiast. These products kick ass in so many ways. There's so many design attributes of both that are on very equal footing. There's just little differences in features that we talked about here and budget-wise that you have to consider. So I'm kind of curious. Comment down below. Which model do you have? If you have one of these flagship receivers, I want to know about it. I want to know your experience, your audiophile experience with them, how you think they sound in your setup. And if you're thinking about doing any upgrades, give us some comments down below. And please don't forget about our Patreon channel at patreon.com slash audioholics. It gives you a chance to get direct access to us. We get direct feedback. Uh, you can suggest video topics and you also help support the channel. Don't forget about the Meals on Wheels charity that we are doing, that we're trying to help out senior citizens to get food. That's something I'm going to be running all the time. It's not just a limited time thing for Christmas. I just think it's a good cause. So if it's your choice between donating to our Patreon versus helping a senior citizen get a meal, please help the senior citizen. We appreciate all the support you give us, but we want to help the community as well. 
Well, guys, I think that's about it. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel. There's a lot of you that aren't subscribed. You're going to miss every time I drop a new video. So please subscribe right now. Make sure you thumb this up, share the video, share the wealth. And until next time, my friends, keep listening.